We're in a series right now on Ag PhD talking about how to read a soil test. It's super important. The scary thing is, unfortunately, there are a lot of people making fertilizer recommendations in our country that don't know how to read a soil test. So we want you as a farmer to learn how to do it on your farm. And if nothing else, if you still want to take the advice of some fertilizer dealer, you can do that. But now you got a lot more things to quiz him on. Well, everybody thinks soil tests are so complicated. And, and honestly, if Brandon and I can understand it, you can certainly understand it. It just takes a little bit of practice. And the good thing is, if you have your own farm and you're looking at your own soil tests, you take a lot of ownership of those. And whenever I've got some skin in the game or I've got some money invested in this thing, I want to learn a lot better and I normally do learn a lot quicker. So one of the most important things that we want you to look on the soil test is base saturation. Now, hold on, Your hold soil on. Test... I would say this, a lot of soil tests don't have base right. saturation. So what I would say is as you're getting ready to take some soil tests this fall, make sure that your, to your soil test is going to come back with a base saturation reading. So if your lab says, well, that's going to cost an extra two bucks, spend the extra two bucks. It's really worth it. And if your lab says, what? No, we don't believe in base saturation we suggest considering another lab. Okay, with base saturation, it's a little bit complicated, so we're gonna talk about some of the basics today, and then we'll discuss it in a little bit more detail in just a few weeks. But just so you understand what it is, it's basically a ratio of five different nutrients. So we've got sodium in there and hydrogen. We also have calcium, magnesium, and potassium. And potassium is the one in particular that we wanna look at first because like on our own farm and on many farms we find across the country, that reading is too low. In other words, even if you have a parts per million level that says, hey, it's pretty good out in the field, don't trust that. What you need to trust more is base saturation. The reason why is if you don't have a good ratio of potassium to these other four nutrients, the potassium just isn't getting into the plant. So I can have all the parts per million I want on potassium, but if my level of potassium in base saturation is below 4%, I still need more potassium out in that field. Well, that's pretty easy. You can add more potassium. Another one that is also fairly easy is calcium. If you're low in calcium, you can just add more calcium in a variety of different sources. If you're below about 60% calcium on that base saturation, then we would suggest putting on some lime. Once we're above that and, and we're still a little bit low compared to where we'd like to be on calcium, you may use something like calcium sulfate or gypsum. So there are just a number of different ways you can fix that. With magnesium in our part of the world, we're typically high rather than low because of the type of clay that we have in our soil. But that's another one you may look at in your part of the world. Maybe you're low on magnesium and you just need to add more in your fertility program. With magnesium, we'd like to see roughly 12% to 25% in the base saturation test. With sodium, we want that less than 1%. Too much sodium is a bad thing. Same thing with hydrogen. Too much is a bad thing. We want the hydrogen percentage less than 10%. If the hydrogen is high, that means you have a low pH soil. It's pretty easy to fix. Just put lime out there. That will raise your pH, and it will lower that hydrogen level down. We're just kind of giving you a big, broad overview. As Brian said, this is a, an important topic, and it's going to take just a little bit of explanation, and it'll be real simple for you to understand for your farm. We're going to get into more of the details of all these things as we get later on into the fall here, and as you get closer to pulling those soil samples after your crop comes off. Well, another important thing on the farm is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up next.